Welcome to Biz Hope For You with host Candy Messer. Entrepreneurs like to focus on the big picture, like profitability, success, and a smooth running organization. There always seems to be those little things like taxes, employee compensation, laws, regulations, and more. Now, you can get the answers you need in one place. Join us today as we break it all down for you. Now, here is your host, Candy Messer. Hello and welcome to Biz Help For You with Candy Messer. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you found the information on last week's show, What Are the Top Financial Mistakes Women Business Owners Make? Informative. If you are unable to join us and would like to listen to the show, you can find links on our YouTube and Facebook pages, as well as links for iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. If there are topics you'd find beneficial or questions you have, please feel free to reach out to me at media at abandp.com. Now, let's learn a little bit about our guest today. Buying Time LLC founder, B.B. Goldstein, is a time management and systems expert, speaker, and co-author of Get Organized Today and Business Success with Ease, where she provides information on establishing systems in every size business. She's an Infusionsoft certified partner and works with many entrepreneurs to automate and systematize their businesses in order to maximize their time. She's an active member of her business community in the South Bay. BB is the current chair for the South Bay Women's Conference, executive board member at the Manhattan Beach Chamber of Commerce, community chair, board member at the Redondo Beach Chamber of Commerce, advisory board member for Walk with Sally, a mentoring program, and past president of the South Bay Business Women's Association. And she served as a committee member and past chair for the Manhattan Beach Women in Business, past president of the Kiwanis Club of Manhattan Beach, and a member of the 2011 Class of Leadership Redondo. Bibi has strong lifelong ties to the South Bay community, she lives in Redondo Beach with her husband, Mark, and has a daughter, Julie, who is a hairstylist and a local entrepreneur. So, BB, welcome to our podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Candy. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I'm glad to have you again. I know when I first launched my podcast, uh, you were one of my first guests back in August 2019, I guess that was. So um, I'm glad to have you back again. And I know we have an exciting topic to talk about today. So I'm glad that we can discuss it. But before we get into that, I want you just to tell me a little bit more about yourself and how did you even get into this industry? Okay, so... Uh, that bio like talks about all of my community stuff and everything that I've, I've done, but you know, that whole idea of how, um, uh, businesses start and the concept around that most of us start our businesses out of a need. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's really kind of where mine started, um, back in 2007, uh, actually 2006, uh, we had to take my mother's, uh, license away from her. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had gotten herself into a little, uh, a, a couple of different uh, things that uh, rec where were we recognized as a family that she just couldn't drive anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I s was working full time. I was traveling a lot uh, in my corporate job. And I mean, we were just trying to find something uh, that would help her just kind of like get groceries, do something like that and uh, help her pay bills, uh, help her do some of the, the things that, uh, that we would normally take care of on a day-to-day -day basis if we were living with her. Uh, I always say that the catalyst was, uh, she had this, aside from having the, the car issue, uh, my mom was an immigrant. Mm -hmm. So her communication when it came to English and understanding things. And, and we had lost my dad in 2000. And so, you know, she, up until the time that my dad passed, I think maybe had written, you know, all of about one or two checks in her entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, she had written for a $7 and 89 cent uh, bill to the gas company. She had written a $789 check. Um, so it, you know, so there were things like that and we just wanted somebody to be able to, you know, sit with her and do some of those things. 
And funny enough, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find like a, uh, a an assistant of some kind that would, you know, come to our house and, and help do some of those day to day kind of, you know, even just talking to the gardener or talking to, you know, things that she needed on a regular basis that one of the kids could not be around for. So when I started looking at this and, and at the time when I started this business, uh, it was with a, a friend and um, we started to do some research and started looking at different uh, potential uh, opportunities that somebody would pay for something like this. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how interesting is it that we live in an area in the South Bay of Los Angeles here that uh, really could benefit from something like this. And yet there wasn't anything. Mm -hmm. So we found a woman in Texas who was doing a business like this and kind of decided that we were going to piggyback off of that. So when we started the business in 2007, it was more of an, a personal assistant service. So we were walking dogs and getting groceries and picking up dry cleaning, uh, different things like that. Uh, ultimately, we had a client who uh, needed some help with a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And when she got the, she had reached out to us and said, hey, do you guys do this? And I mean, I was in corporate for so long and I had done so many of those kinds of things. I was like, yeah, sure, I can do a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And um, that was our kind of tipping point into the virtual world. And uh, ever since then, we haven't really looked back. You know, it took us a while to get out of the errand business and took us a while to kind of transition everything. We did organizing, we did event planning, we did all of that stuff. Uh, and we've now transitioned into this complete virtual world. Mm -hmm. Well, I would love to have your definition actually of what a virtual assistant is. So anyone who's listening understands that concept and then it will make sense, you know, as we start talking more about the things, um, you know, the questions that I have for you, but what would you say a virtual assistant really is? So a virtual assistant, or as we refer to it as a VA, uh, is someone who can pretty much do anything any other assistant can do, uh, except physically, you know, bring you coffee or do <laughs> things like that. Uh, but a virtual assistant can really be effective because there is there is that focused. I'm sitting down to work, and this is what I'm doing. And and mind you, when we started this, social media wasn't a mm -hmm. big. Uh, thing at that time. Uh, so there wasn't really that much of a, of a distraction, if you will. Right. But overall, what a virtual assistant does is everything from handling customer service, they can handle your emails in your inbox, they can uh, do uh, your data entry for your, for your bookkeeping, they can do your uh, uh, marketing, social media posting, um, uh, there, there are VAs even on our team that uh, do graphic design templates, uh, can help with web development and web updates, website updates. So there's a variety of different types of VAs out there, but for the most part, it really is somebody who can administratively run your business mm -hmm. without you having to be that person. And you can focus on the actual bookkeeping, on the actual things that you're doing in your business instead of the administrative side. Right. So are there different types of virtual assistants or is it just kind of under one big umbrella? There are definitely different types of virtual assistants. So you can have a virtual assistant that specializes in a particular lane. Mm -hmm. um, there are virtual assistants who just do customer service, meaning what they're doing is they're handling and talking to uh, clients if they're the, the, for instance, if that person is a coach for, for instance, and they might have an online course and they're helping them because that person can't find their login or they've done this or they can't do that or, or you know, their credit cards expired um, and they need to update that in the system. So really that hands-on kind of feeling of customer service, answering phones, you know, mm -hmm. picking up the phone and, and calling clients. Then you can have more of a digital marketing assistant. You can have somebody who's more into the uh, email marketing, 
uh, social media, all of the things that go into our online digital world, helping you with blog posts, articles, uh, um, helping even with some basic kind of video editing. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have what I would kind of say is more of a technical assistant. A technical VA is somebody who is really familiar with automation programs, uh, CRMs, really kind of getting into helping you uh, build uh, platforms and campaigns around. Uh, and, and that would probably include uh, website updates and things like that. Uh, and then there is the step up from that VA, which is a little bit more like a project manager. Um, an online business manager, someone who's just kind of running the overall uh, business and running your operation, everything from the customer service all the way through to the technical. Mm -hmm. So obviously we know buying time, your company is a virtual assistant company. And we we're talking about, you know, someone being a virtual assistant, but can you explain maybe what you do um, and how maybe virtual assistants actually work with you as well as someone just being their own virtual assistant, maybe how those coordinate? So we're an unusual uh, setup, if you will. And the reason why I say that is because there are a lot of, uh, independent contractor mm -hmm. virtual assistants out there. And that's great. If that's the thing that works, fantastic. Uh, we started that way and we had a, 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 a variety of what we referred to as subcontractors that would do work for our clients on behalf of buying time. And we eventually ended up in a situation where we decided to move to an employee model. So mm -hmm. all of our team are actually employees. They're all US based. And uh, we focus on the soup to nuts, like, like mm -hmm. I mentioned, we have the customer service capabilities. We help with, with data entry for bookkeeping. We help with website updates. We help with any of these kinds of things, you know, um, where in, for us, that whole idea of, you know, you like your expertise in bookkeeping and your expertise in what you do. We don't, we don't have that level of expertise, but we can make your job easier, right? Mm -hmm. By doing some of the things that lead up to that part, mm -hmm. right? And so our team, we, I couldn't do that really with independent contractors. I had to be able to have a little bit more control over the quality of work and um, you know the hours of the work and those kinds of things. And that's why we decided to bring it in house. So when you work with the VAs at buying time uh, are all employees, all US based. We have a benefits package for the team that, that works here. Uh, we are very uh, focused on the team being uh, a culture of that, that they create themselves. Mm -hmm. um, myself and my COO, Stephanie. Stephanie is uh, amazing with the team and does a great job managing the, just the overall workflow for everybody and just being present for them. So mm -hmm. our model is a little bit different in that sense. Right. So I think if an entrepreneur is listening right now and is thinking like, well, maybe I need to have a virtual assistant help me, you know, then it might be, you know, in their best interest to actually reach out to a business like you that actually manages the VAs as well and has people with multiple disciplines, let's say that can help them in different areas instead of just trying to find like their own VA is what it sounds like. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, so we, when you come, to us, you're working with an entire team. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you hire a single VA, you're hiring somebody with one set of skills. Uh, with us, uh, currently, there's nine of us. And so mm -hmm. you have all the different skill sets. And so if, if uh, graphics aren't a need that you normally have, and it's just day to day email marketing, or even, you know, the clients that use us for a couple of hours a month, just to make sure they get a newsletter out, just so that they're consistent in talking to their list and to their community. Right. Um, and then every once in a while might need a graphic or something. They don't necessarily have to go outside of their time with us in order to get that done. 
Mm -hmm. uh, if they have a issue with their website and they don't know, who, they don't have somebody who's their, um, you know, uh, web person, they can go, hey, can you guys take a look at this? I, I got this error message or this mm -hmm. happened. And so we try to help to get our clients to understand that, that ask, always ask us first, because we may have the resource in-house that can help you with that. And if we don't, after all the years in business, mm -hmm. we might even have the outside resource that you would probably need in order to get that done. Right. So I know today we wanted to focus more on, you know, the people who might be interested in even becoming a virtual assistant. You know, I did want to touch on, you know, like an employer, you know, or entrepreneur, you know, someone like me too, who might need help in being able to reach out to you and why buying time would be a great resource. Um, but I do know you wanted to talk about your virtual assistant, you know, university. So I would love to actually go into that direction too and actually have you explain, first of all, what is the university and how did you even get started creating that university? Oh, this has <laughs> been in the works for over a year. <laughs> um, and it just started out as this idea. Uh, honestly, it came from a conversation uh, in a group that uh, was about, you know, have you ever thought about teaching other people what you know so that they don't make all the mistakes and spend money where they shouldn't and um, put their efforts into things that they shouldn't in becoming a VA. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah, I mean, I could, I could like teach a class or, you know, do a webinar and, and, you know, if anybody's interested in becoming a VA, they can come and talk to me kind of thing. Um, and as time evolved and, I kind of got to talking to my team and to my business coach and, you know, we were kind of going back and forth and, and my business coach was like, I see this as something so much bigger, you know, mm -hmm. like there's gotta be something bigger in this. And, you know, after many discussions, uh, especially with my team, um, I, we finally, I think it was probably like last May where we started to talk about, what if we created like an actual school, you know, mm -hmm. and a place for people to come to, to continue to learn, you know, and to continue to have things that if there's an evolution of platforms and, and different ways that VAs can continue to better themselves and be more for their clients, uh, maybe creating a community within one of the social media platforms so that they could ask questions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you don't know what's supposed to go into a proposal until you've either seen an example or someone actually walks you through how to do a proposal. And, you know, how, how they should even price, how they should, you know, set themselves up in business. What, you know, do they, should they be a business entity or do they do a DBA? Do they, you know, do I need a website on day one? It's like all these conversations. And so the university was born. So mm -hmm. the university was born and uh, in 2020, as you know, in the middle, in the middle of May, when all this was happening, uh, we were in um, prime pandemic time. Right. And uh, so we thought we, we'd taken a, a dive in a lot of business, a lot of people just pulling back. And uh, so we lost uh, some many clients and we thought we don't want to, we don't want to lose any more team. Mm -hmm. So how can we do something with our time right now and utilize the PPP that was out there and some of the other things so that we didn't have to let anybody go. And we started to do work on this and started to develop the curriculum around it. The, the university itself right now is built up of three courses. It's business foundation, business building, and business operations. Mm -hmm. And so when, when we started talking to people about it, it, it was like, wow, that's kind of interesting. Um, well, I don't know anybody who wants to do that. And then, you know, fast forward to, we were supposed to launch Thanksgiving, uh, we were going to launch, I think, um, uh, Cyber Monday. 
Mm, okay. Is what I had originally planned to launch. And I got to tell you, Candy, uh, it was one of the most um, heartbreaking things for me that we weren't ready to launch. And um, th there was a lot of things that went into it and we just needed to have some more time with it. We, we started to see an uptick of clients coming back. We had backed in September, had to hire an additional person. So, you know, we were starting to see things happening again. And we then hit the holidays and the pandemic surged again, and we had all of these other things happening. But the thing that was happening that was breaking my heart and that I was really struggling with is just watching the sheer number of people who are out of work. Mm -hmm. We have seen um, unemployment numbers like we've never seen. Right. Uh, and the, the incredibly sad part about it is that um, net in jobs created and jobs uh, lost, over 80% of it is women. Right. Mm -hmm. So not that the university is not um, a place for, for men who want to become VAs as well, because there are plenty of them. I have two, two men on my team. So uh, it, was, it was really that and that kind of like got me out of that funk and pushed me and the team to we need to launch this we okay. need to move forward with this so uh it launched in january and we've just done a soft launch uh just with family and friends and it's been really good uh, we're getting a great response we're seeing a lot of people understand that this type of business does not take a lot to start Mm -hmm. you know so that's that's who we're hoping to reach mm -hmm. well and I would love for you to touch on that too when you just said it doesn't take a lot to start so someone might be thinking like oh well that sounds interesting I think I would like to do that but it's probably a lot of work you know so can you talk about what it really does take to start their own VA business it takes you wanting to be out in front of people at least in the beginning because you got a network you got to find your clients. So that, that piece is one that it takes. Um, and I will say quite honestly, uh, if there's from a monetary perspective, the main thing that I encourage people is about legal and finance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You, you need to set your business up as a legal entity. We have a whole section of that in our, uh, in our university where we talk to a uh, business attorney uh, and, and the business attorney explains why it's important for you to actually set your business up. Even if it's just you, even right. if you're just working as an independent contractor, what and why you need to protect yourself. And as I don't have to tell you, Candy, one of the biggest things we talk about is that idea that you cannot commingle your business and your personal. Yep. And really getting people to understand that. So honestly, I would say that how whatever that cost in setting up your entity uh, is along with a couple of other peripheral type of costs, uh, mm -hmm. setting up QuickBooks, you know, whatever you put into the beginning of a bank account, those are minimal costs, right? Minimal costs. And you can open your doors tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You could start making money tomorrow. If you, as long as you're out there and you're willing to ask for the clients, you will, you will get them. There are such, there's such a need. And mm -hmm. I personally would like to see that happened here in the United States. And I want to keep it here right. instead of people paying for offshore VAs. Mm -hmm. I agree too, because even in my business, I mean, I get people all the time reaching out to me, you know, from other countries like, oh, I'll work for you and it will only be this much per hour. Or, you know, I've even heard of a, a lot of accounts that are actually going to companies that do that. But I also have a passion to keep my people employed here in the United States. So um, there is obviously a less expensive cost if you do that, but we, you and I both have a passion, right? We want to keep people employed who are at home. So 
I think it's exciting that you've actually started this university too, and it's important. And I think we should even just touch on too, you were saying that there's a lot of people that are out of work. And so this is a great opportunity for them, but there's even those who maybe still have their job, but they're at home and they're struggling because they're trying to manage kids and their responsibilities. So I think that your university would be a good opportunity for those who even still maybe are employed, but they're looking for a different option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because when we created um, the university, uh, one of the conversations uh, with my with my coach, um, who you know, um, and <laughs> is, I'm sure it's okay for me to just say her name, right? Like it's, it's Joy Chudikoff, and and so Joy, when Joy, in having that conversation with Joy about, you know, what's our tagline going to be? What are the things that we're going to be what, that we want? this to represent. And that's why we came up with the three just simple words that are our tagline on the bottom of our uh, logo. And that is um, lifestyle choice and freedom. Mm. Uh, those are all some of my core values, mm -hmm. freedom being my number one core value, because I feel like with freedom, if you have freedom, then all the rest of it kind of falls into place. Right. And with what's happening in the world right now, with parents being at home and having um, kids that are doing online learning and, and forget the online learning part, even just the fact that everybody's pretty much with everyone in their household 24 seven, <laughs> and there's no break and there's no, you know, anything, you know, I'm, I'm grateful. I mean, I have a grown child, but you know, I have my own space in the house. This is right. my office. It's not, it's not my bedroom. It's not my kitchen table. It's not. And so I have that ability to kind of be able to separate and be in my own space. Now, I would say quite honestly that most of these, most of the people who are learning to work virtually now because their, their company has had to do that in the right. face of this pandemic, but you're still not in charge of your own path. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. the concept of being able to have that freedom that says, um, I'm, I'm going to start my own VA company or in my own VA business, but you know what? I can work from eight until 10 and then work again from three until five mm -hmm. or uh, work in the evenings when, when, um, when my child goes to bed, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, whatever it is that you feel where you feel the most productive and that you can still be present for those people in your family without mm -hmm. them having to kind of take on uh, the stresses of I've got this meeting and my kid's going to knock on the door. Right. Right. <laughs> because now you're the boss and you're in charge and you don't have to be attached to somebody else's schedule. Right you get to choose. Mm -hmm. So that's important to me when you're talking to those people who, who still have income coming in, who still have, you know, that, that, that job mm -hmm. it's, but does it still really give you the freedom that you're looking for? Right. Exactly. Well, I would love for you to talk about then if someone says, yes, this sounds great. I want to join the university and I want to learn, you know, to have my own business, what kind of support can they get by being an enrollee in your university? Well, so my whole team has been part of this process. <laughs> I don't think that there is anybody on our team that hasn't been a part of this process. So all nine of us are invested. We've created a, uh, a group on, in Facebook that allows for people to ask questions, uh, present, you know, I, I, I got a potential client. Um, I could really use some help. Um, we're, we are there to support in all aspects of what they need from the business foundation all the way through to the business operations and helping them to quite, you know, understand that there's somebody out there for everybody. You know, 
because you and I have known each other for so long, you know that I don't believe in competition. And this is one of my, always my pet peeves when I hear other people talk about, well, so-and-so is doing this and so-and-so is doing that. Right. And it's like, who cares? <laughs> Focus on what you're good at. And those people who need what you're good at, they will come for you. Mm-hmm. And getting, you know, the, the main thing with support for me, especially with people who are brand new at being entrepreneurs, right. uh, is going to be that mindset piece, mm-hmm. right? How do you get past yourself so that you can serve? Mm-hmm. And really, quite honestly, most people who, who want to start a VA business, they really just need about four or five clients. Mm-hmm. And that's enough for them to make a pretty good living from. Right. It really is. And we want to be able to show that to them. And the only way we can show that to them is by being there to support them. The mm-hmm. Facebook group, online chats, uh, email access. Uh, if they, uh, we, we're going to start doing um uh, lives within the group and Q and A's so that people can ask because what one person's question is, is also right. another person's question that they're too yeah. afraid to ask. <laughs> That's so right. We're focused on really making them as successful as possible because we want to be able to refer people to them too. Right. You know, there's times where business comes our way where we're just kind of like, yeah, this isn't really our, uh, the wheelhouse the, 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 yeah like what we're what we're good at mm-hmm. um but there might be somebody out there who is right and is that like a time limit or once they enroll they could be in that like five years later if they want to come in and still hear the you know the live conversations or you know is you know how's that going to work so the facebook group is once you become a student you will always be a student mm-hmm. Okay, alumni, student, whatever you are, you will always be part of that group for life. Mm -hmm. As long as that group is in existence, they will be in there. Um, Obviously, as long as there's no, you know, issues and uh, and and conduct that that isn't part of uh, what we are trying to uh, foster in there, then otherwise. They're in there for as long as they need support and as long as they need help. We want this to become something of the future Mm -hmm. that more people see here in our own country and in America, because this is, it's, it's been a really hot topic. And I know we talk a lot about like, don't talk about politics and don't talk about these things in business and I have a very difficult time because as I said earlier, my mother was an immigrant. Um, I came here when I was two years old and became a citizen of of this country. And I love my country. Mm -hmm. I love my country. And I hear people say all the time how much they love their country. And yet they are the first ones who are spending their money somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I want to build enough people who are doing this type of virtual work that they can support their families, sustain a business and be able to do it right here mm-hmm. or from wherever. Cause that's right. the other thing I really want to encourage everybody to know. Believe me, I love the entire world. If I, I if my goal one day is to go live in Paris for a month nice. and then maybe live in Spain for a month and then go to Australia for a month and be able to still work for those from those places. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the beauty of this is that they give you the flexibility to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that in, in, in recognizing that we have so many people who could benefit from something like this right now, right. It is uh, for me, something that would create so much uh, of a ripple effect, right? you know, in helping some of these uh, women or men who are without a job, who then can then take that money and spend it in their community and spend, you know, and put back into the economy. And that's what I would like to see us do more of. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and I like that you have those extra resources too, so that someone doesn't feel like I'm just paying for this course and then I'm on my own, you know? So it's really nice to hear you have those other resources to help them, you know, be a success. Cause I know, you know, I don't know of a program similar to this, but I know there's been other things that I have seen out there that is just, you know, you, you buy a course, you do your little thing online and that's kind of it, you know? So it's we good. We want to continue. We want to continue to be resources. We're going to have, you know, attorneys listed on our resources. And these are all people that we've vetted, mm -hmm. um, you know, people who can help them from a financial perspective, people who are gonna, that, that they can reach out to and say, you know, I need this help. I need, I'm trying to figure out what I do next and how do I, how do I do this? So yeah, I, I want them to, and we're going to keep, like I said, adding courses, you know, we, we want to be able to teach them if, if they want to learn how to use Canva as a VA and the things that they can do within Canva as a VA, we're going to have one of our team do, you know, a course on that. So they will still have con op opportunity to continue to learn to improve their skill sets. Mm -hmm. And that's important too, because with the VA too, and technology changing all the time, it's important to be able to stay up on it, but it's probably really hard to be aware of everything that's going on. So if you guys are monitoring like, oh, here's a new, you know, I don't know, a CRM or something, you know, like here's some, a new email list or something that could be used. Like you guys are monitoring that and can create those courses too and help them get educated. Well, and, and I mean, you know, just look at your business, Candy. Like I remember, I don't know, probably just even five to seven years ago, the only things really out there were Quicken and QuickBooks, right? Right. By the same now maker. we have right. what, zero and Wait. fresh books mm -hmm. and oh my God, there's just, there's all kinds of stuff out there now. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to use something different or they want to use the new thing. Right. right. And I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a tried and true. So, you know, I'm <laughs> never going to go away from QuickBooks, but like, I, like, I, I think that there's, there's a lot of opportunity to say, Hey, I know QuickBooks, but if you guys want us to work in zero for you, then we'll work in zero for you, right? And I know that you're willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Well, I would love to hear what is your vision, you know, for the future of buying time and your virtual assistance university? The vision is that we have uh, anywhere from 70 to 80 graduates every year nice to the university and that they are building prosperous businesses and always feel like they have a support system mm -hmm. and that buying time ultimately will continue to have our VA side of our business I don't think that that will ever go away Mm -hmm. um, it's the core of what we do, but I, I think that we could be, um, a whole nother group of educators in the sense of being able to help people through this process and, and be available to them and not have them worry about, you know, I've got to pay for, you know, some more coaching time, or I've got to pay for this, or I got, and that's not what we want. We want to really build a community and build a place for mentoring and educating uh, those people. And I think that my team that I've got right now is probably looking forward to doing a lot of that. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm excited for you too, because of course, like I said, we've known each other for a while and I've seen your business change over time, just like you've seen my business change over time, mm -hmm. you know, and and when you mentioned this not that long ago too, that you were launching it, I was like, wow, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> you know? So I'm glad that you're able to actually come on my podcast today to talk about it. So I'm sure you have an offer that you would love to share with the listeners. So what is it? Well, what I would love to, to offer any of the listeners is to go. And uh, if you're interested in the university, please go and apply. Uh, we are putting a, uh, a link together for candy that when you click on that to apply that we will waive the application fee that's a hundred and fifty dollar application fee uh, that will be waived for you and we encourage you to 
take that time to go out and uh, take your your life and your freedom into your own hands. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's Virtual Assistance University, and that's a plural. So uh, virtual and then plural assistance university. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Com. Well, thank you for doing that. I'm excited that it's available and, you know, people who are interested in starting, you know, their own business can reach out and learn more about your program and go through your university and start their business. <laughs> so that's exciting. Thanks for having me. I was so appreciate. I, I like love talking about this stuff and I think that it's so important to, to, um, recognize uh, the things that you do in supporting other women, um, having them on your podcast like this, having them um, have a platform to be able to talk about what they want to do and, mm -hmm. and what their life is and how they can support and serve other women. So thank you. Well, I'm glad that you're on my show. Thanks for sharing, you know, your expertise and uh, your excitement about your new university. And um, I also want to thank the listeners for tuning in today. So I hope you found this topic interesting and that it answered some questions about your path to real freedom, creating your own virtual assistant business. If you have any additional questions or comments, be sure to reach out to BB. And actually, I don't think I asked you yet to share your links. Um, I know you shared the virtual assistant university, but why don't you share how people can find you on social media or your website or, you know, any of that. Those, those are easy. It's buying time, LLC.com. And all of our social media is all at buying time, LLC on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on uh, Facebook, everywhere. We're at buying time, LLC. Perfect. So if you have questions, want to reach BB or her team, reach out at any of those links that she just shared. Um, or you can also send us a message at media at a, B, and P .com. And please share this show information with those you know. I'd really appreciate your support. Be sure to tune in next week for another informative topic. And remember, you can connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And my website is a, B, and p.com and don't forget you can find the podcast posted on itunes tune in stitcher iHeartRadio, and spotify until next time have a great week thank you for listening to this help for you please join your host candy messer again next tuesday have a terrific week